You're listening to Factual America. I think that brings us to a good point um, to see or listen to another clip. Um, one where uh, he talks a lot about biodiversity, which is, I think, I don't remember hearing about biodiversity when I was growing up, but it is certainly something that my children talk a lot about now, uh, my teenagers. Um, and it's also one where he talks about this being his witness statement. So um, let's, uh, let's listen to that now um, and see what Sir David actually has to say. The living world is a unique and spectacular marvel. Billions of individuals of millions of kinds of plants and animals, dazzling in their variety and richness. Working together to benefit from the energy of the sun and the minerals of the earth. Leading lives that interlock in such a way that they sustain each other. We rely entirely on this finely tuned life support machine. And it relies on its biodiversity to run smoothly. Yet the way we humans live on Earth now is sending biodiversity into a decline. The natural world is fading. The evidence is all around. It's happened in my lifetime. I've seen it with my own eyes. This film is my witness statement and my vision for the future. The story of how we came to make this our greatest mistake and how, if we act now, we can yet put it right. So, uh, Colin, we've just listened to that, uh, that uh, clip about uh, biodiversity. Um, I mean, I, I highly recommend the film, obviously. Um, I sat down with my family and watched it last night. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to go through the whole, rehash the whole film. I just, you know, people should go and, and watch it. Uh, I'm sure you would agree. But, um, basically let's kind of cut to the chase. What happens if we, we don't do anything? Um, well, I think we've got two things happening at exactly the same time. So on the one hand, we're shrinking biodiversity, as, as David talks about in the film, the single most important component for keeping the planet stable. Um, and, and I think as the rate we're losing it is extraordinary. I mean, one stat that springs to mind was that um, we've lost 68% of average wildlife populations since the 1970s. So in my lifetime, we've lost on average 68% of wildlife populations. So extraordinary decline. Um, and that has often been considered as something that's a bit sad. You know, it's not it's, it mm. a bit sad for those animals that we've lost. But actually what we're trying to show here is that it's destabilizing the planet. It's absolutely destabilizing everything we rely on. And of course, what's happening hand in hand with that is climate change. Mm. Um, the climate, as I'm sure most of you listeners know, has changed incredibly fast, particularly over the last couple of decades. And actually the fact that the ocean's been absorbing so much of, 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 of the excess heat and carbon means that we've actually masked that impact. So it's likely to continue to accelerate. Those two things happening at the same time will create an, a destabilized planet where, to be honest, I mean, one, I mean the, probably the scariest thought in all of this is human civilizations have only existed on this stable planet that we've had for about 10, 11,000 years in the Holocene. Yeah. We have stabilized it so much. There's a real question. We've never tried to exist in these conditions before. Um, and that's the challenge. We're having an unstable planet at the time we're putting the greatest demands on it. Mm. So, and I think, I, I think that's a point the film makes, makes quite well. I mean, uh, you mentioned the Holocene, this 10, 000, 10 to 11,000 year period that we've had. And also, um, you also make mention of these previous mass uh, extinction that, yes. that have happened. Um, but let's, I mean, uh, and, and the, there's a segment of the film about, I guess, 45, 50 minutes in where uh, Sir David talks about what someone born now, what they could possibly expect to see in their lifetime. Um, and we won't go through all that, but even just thinking in terms of the 2030s, which is as little as 10 years away, um, 
he talks about the Amazon rainforest, and we've already got like what the Brazilian wetlands uh, have already a quarter of it's been lost this year from from wildfires, you know, things like that. Uh, the Arctic, the ice free in the summer. I mean, are these that timeline that he put, paints out? Is that if we don't do apps? if we do absolutely nothing or if we, even if we carry on with the few little things we've been starting to do, is this, you know, this is, is that how likely is that really to happen? Um, so the, the points you make about the Amazon, the Arctic are extraordinarily realistic within the next decade that we'll pass a tipping point where mm. they become irrecoverable. Now that doesn't mean the, the Amazon, for example, has completely disappeared within a decade. It means that we've passed the point where we can turn turn off that system, where we can stop the decline. It would ultimately, in the case of the Amazon, it would have lost so much moisture. It would ultimately be in a tipping point towards perpetual decline. The same with the Arctic sea ice. So yeah, I'm afraid that it's completely realistic and it's on the trajectory that we are currently on. Now that said, people are starting to take steps, particularly with regard to climate change and renewable energy. There is still time to turn this off and change it, but yeah, on the current trajectory, you will pass tipping points within a decade. The, the crazy thing of our times is the scientists have done the work. They've shown us the problems and they've also shown us the solutions. It is very, very clear that we can get ourselves out of this mess. And everyone needs to know that. It is a not an, an inevitability that things are going to carry on and go badly wrong. Um, we know all the solutions. We know what we have to do. We just require now the will and the determination to do what needs to happen. And that has to be the message. People have to understand, no, it's, you know, we can get out of this thing, mm. but we haven't got a lot of time. If we're going to get out of it, we have to do it quickly.